<clears throat> Hello everybody and welcome back to Truth For Real Truth Audio and welcome back to our series responding to Venom Fang X, Sean, that guy on YouTube's series Evolution Wants to Make a Monkey Out of You. This is part three, mine part five and probably six. Maybe not actually because as you can see I'm starting at three minutes and twenty seconds. The reason being uh, most of the first part is just some stupid cartoon from The Simpsons. I think it's kind of funny, but he makes fun of it because it has to do with abiogenesis and he thinks it's too magical to happen. Okay, basically, we just know what happened. I'm not educated in the field of abiogenesis, so I don't want to go too much into it. Um, you're not going to say, oh, well, you don't know because, you know, it's just impossible. Well, honestly, I have no clue. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with evolution. Up here, evolution wants to make a monkey out of you. Part three. Abiogenesis has nothing to do with evolution, nor does the Big Bang. But I, I am not educated in the field of abiogenesis, therefore I will not discuss it. He, I think he starts discussing the, the flood at about 3 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm starting at 3.20 seconds, so let's get started, nonetheless. One minute, Whereby the world seconds. that was, being overflowed with water, perished. God flooded the world 4,400 years ago, and those who reject God are also willingly ignorant of this fact, and all the geological evidence that points to it. That's why we... Well, I'm not sure about... Well, yeah, maybe, but I don't reject God, and I believe in evolution, and I don't believe in a worldwide flood, I believe in a local flood. ...find fossils in the mud, that's why we find oil deposits under enormous pressure. Just a quick note about the oil deposits. Oil is well known to be organic material compressed under enormous pressure over a period of time. However, if those oil deposits are millions of years old, like the evolutionists say, uh, that oil pressure would have dissipated and broken through the rocks. There's no way that the laws of physics would allow that amount of oil under... I'm not sure about that. I'd have to see your cited source for that. ...there to remain under that amount of pressure uh, for that long. So the oil deposits are only a few thousand years old, uh, and they were created by the worldwide flood. People like to ask if there was a worldwide flood, where did the water come from and where did the water go? Even though you've discussed this before, you said there was a canopy over the earth, and you said that he, it rained on the earth from the canopy for 40 years and 40 nights, I think. Well, the Bible says that God founded the earth upon the floods, meaning there was water underneath the crust of the earth as well. The Bible says that there was water above the atmosphere, which fell down to the earth during the worldwide flood, which is why it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Yep. God says that the fountains of the deep broke open, and the earth's crust cracked, and that's where most of the water came from, which is why we have these ginormous fault lines running across the earth in the deepest parts of the oceans. The earth... Uh... Actually, they're called... Are you serious? It's actually tectonic plates. I'm sorry. Tectonic plates work on both land and the sea. Not because there was a giant crack. I'm actually not sure about that. Um, but, yeah. Tectonic plate, Sean. Prior to the flood was most likely a land mass. As the Bible says, most of the water was underneath the crust of the earth. So when people say there's not enough water on the planet in order to cover the highest mountains... Well, it didn't have to. You see, those mountains that exist today didn't exist before the flood. The Bible says that the mountains rose up and the valleys of the ocean sunk downwards. As the fountains of the deep broke open, the enormous amounts of water that were... You know, I've said this before in the last uh, parts three and four, but you're, you know, every series you make or every video you make, every sequel, prequel, the forequel, everything you're supposed to make, you're supposed to make different objections. You're repeating things you said in your first series entitled Satan Invented Evolution, parts 1 through 6. And it, it's just pointless because they've been refuted before, Sean, and you know this. Gushing all over the earth were sliding land masses against each other, and that's what pushed the mountains up. And that's also what sunk the ocean floors down, which hold is on. where the water is down. Sorry, hold on. Alrighty then, sorry about that. A lot of the water is also up in the sky. That's Basically, he said there was three-fourths of the wa of the Earth was covered in water. It has to be four-fifths. There are clouds, and also at the, uh, the ice caps, the north and south poles. If all that water was to uh, gush or melt, and all the clouds burst asunder and rain down, and if all the uh, mountains collapsed down to sea level, and all the sea beds came up to sea level, the entire planet would be covered in miles and miles and miles worth of water. Again, you'd need four-fifths of the Earth covered in water. Times three, okay? No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, yeah, you need four-fifths covered in, of the Earth covered in water. Not three-fourths, not enough. 
Before I show you geological evidence of the worldwide flood, I want to explain what the- What you discussed in the last video. Wow! The world was like before the flood. The Bible says the earth was largely tropical, which is why we find tropical vegetation even under the ice in the Antarctic. The world also was oxidized, which is why even in Time magazine they confess that the air bubbles we find in amber contain 50% more oxygen than we're used to today, which explains why animals were so big and that's how the dinosaurs were so enormous. That's also why Adam lived to be over 900 years old. And some people say, well, if the dinosaurs were so big and all the other animals we find are so big, I mean, we find enormous cats, enormous elephants, enormous snakes, enormous... Elements? Uh, elements, sorry. Elephants are naturally large. Um, I'm pretty sure. Unless you're saying even more enormous. I mean, we have the mammoth. That's a pretty large uh, beast. And, uh, I mean, how do you explain that? That was, uh, there was an ice age. And remember you saying something like there was an ice age right after the flood or something? I remember I asked you that question when I was a creationist. But, uh, yeah, how do you explain a mammoth, you know? It's insects, enormous animals of all kinds. Uh, what about humans? Well, we also find giant human remains. No. Are you kidding me? Oh, Robert Wadlow. I think that's, yeah, that's Robert Wadlow. He was alive in, like, 1912. Goliath. Um, was Goliath in the in the Bible? I think he was, yeah. He was. Oh, yeah, David and Goliath, huge guy. Right, got it. Some people kind of laugh, and they say, no way. And, yeah, we do. The Bible says there were giants in the earth in those days. Here is a giant human thumb bone compared to a normal human thumb bone. Here's a giant thigh uh, found in Egypt. Ooh, Kent Hovind. Ooh. I don't know about the giants, um, I'm still studying up on the Bible science, and I'm studying up on the giants, if it can fit in my evolutionary beliefs, if not, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, still doing some study. Compared to, uh, normal human. So, God flooded the world and destroyed the old world, the water canopy fell, which decreased oxygen levels, which is why the Bible says that after the flood, human lifespans, uh, dropped from being over 900 to being only about 100. And dinosaurs... 120. Um, the oldest human ever was 122. Her name was, like, Jane Carney. Or I, I'm not sure of the real name. Jane something, I think. Uh, ...were reliant upon that oxygen environment being such large creatures. Even the biggest dinosaurs only had nostrils and lungs the size of your average horse, so they would re rely upon increased amounts of oxygen and air pressure. With that dramatic change in climate and the oxygen levels, the dinosaurs would likely have suffocated, at least the larger ones that relied upon that environment, uh, and we do find reasons to believe that. The dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago from a meteor that hit the Earth. We have, I think we have evidence of this, the tip of Mexico. We have that giant crater, I think that's what we use. And that's why we find the bones fossilized, because they were buried underneath all the sand that kind of was lifted up when the huge meteor destroyed all of them. Uh, yeah, that's why we find all the bones fossilized, and not because of a flood. With the invention of the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, sports teams have taken advantage of the fact that increased amounts of oxygen brings healing. Yeah, you show the dolphins. It didn't help them that much, huh? 1 in 15. 50% an increased rate to their players as well. It's an easy way to make cherry tomato plants grow to absolutely enormous proportions. So when people asked, did Noah bring dinosaurs on the ark, even if he did, and I believe he did, they still would not have been able to survive the climate changes. However, I do believe that dinosaurs uh, were on the ark and that we can find evidence of them surviving even up until recent history, although not the big ones, just, just the smaller ones. In um... I'm guessing they would have had to be in, like, the nice dinosaurs, like the, the herbivores, uh, not the, not the really vicious ones. I mean, uh, why would God create a really vicious, uh, then that wouldn't make much sense, never mind. Uh, you know, uh, what's the point of a really vicious raptor or a T-Rex, you know, what's up with that? It's kind of vicious. In this 1946 dictionary, it says a dragon is a still-living but rare animal. I believe that dragons are dinosaurs. The Bible mentions dragons dozens of times. And I believe those are dinosaurs. The word dinosaur was not invented until the 1800s, and before then, dinosaurs were simply called dragons. They have lived along with mankind since the beginning of time. They were killed off. So you're saying, dr okay, you're about to say they were killed off. off largely during the worldwide flood, and we have hunted them since then, which is why they're extremely rare now. It so now you're saying there actually are dragons? Dragons exist? 
That's almost as insane as you being a uh, geocentrist. Woo! Days. We hear stories from history all about dragons and dragon slayers. Gilgamesh slayed a dragon. The Chinese zodiac has a dragon on it, but all the other animals are not mythical. So what does that tell us about the dragon? King Narmer on this crest here featured dragons. Are you kidding me about China? Wow. The famous Greek historian Herodotus spoke about these winged serpents that did not have feathers on their wings. When the ancient ruins of Babylon were discovered, we found dinosaur inscriptions. In 1326 BC, Alexander the Great reported that his soldiers were scared by the great dragons that lived in the caves when they tried to conquer parts of India. Here's... I'm guessing you're just going to spout things off about dinosaurs for the rest of your video. Yeah, you're talking about dinosaur fossils, why we find them. Because I want to make this one video. Basically, that's all I got.